Hello learners, uh, this video is designed to explain the Davison Germain experiment and varying wave particle duality. Confirms matter's wave nature, which is the major breakthrough in quantum mechanics. Let's talk about the history of uh, this particular experiment. This experiment was uh, conducted in 1927 by Davison and Germer. Uh, they have got Nobel Prize for this discovery in the year 1937, 10 years after the actual experiment performance. Uh, they were expected to have the interaction of electrons with uh, different kinds of crystals. They want to study the scattering effect of electron. So, uh, at first, electrons were thought to be only particles. And as I've mentioned, uh, the purpose for of uh, Davison and Germer's experiment is to study electron scattering uh, from the nickel crystal. For that purpose, uh, they have used this experimental setup. In this experimental setup, uh, there is presence of vacuum chamber. So vacuum tube uh, with nickel crystal uh, is used in this particular experiment. The entire experiment or setup is enclosed in a vacuum chamber to il prevent electrons from scattering of uh, air molecules. So it is expected that they should directly interact with nickel crystal. Next to that, uh, this ensures that uh, due to vacuum, it uh, could be ensured that the only interaction with the crystal contribute to the detected signal and there will not be any interference of the air atmosphere. Another thing uh, which is used in this setup is this electron gun. Uh, Heated tungsten filament emits the electrons and uh, electrons are emitted via thermoionic uh, emission process. A high voltage is applied to this filament uh, which is considered as the cathode and anode uh, to accelerate the electrons. The electron being produced uh, has a well defined kinetic energy which can be controlled by adjusting the accelerating voltage. Next to that, there is a nickel crystal. A single crystal of nickel is used as a target for the electron beam. The crystal is mounted on a rotating stage, allowing the angle of incidence of the electrons to be varied. The regular atomic structure of the crystal acts like a diffraction grating for the incoming electrons. How that is, that we will see. Next to that, uh, there is a presence of electron detector, a movable detector. Uh, you may see in the figure is used to detect the electrons scattered by this nickel crystal. Uh, this detector is used to measure the intensity of electrons at different uh, scattering angles. Next to that, for crystal and detector, a rotational mechanism is used. This allows measurement of the angle, di angular distribution of scattered electrons and accurate determination of diffraction angles. So this is the experimental setup of Davison Germer. They were expecting after the interaction of electrons with nickel crystal, there will be the scattering of electrons. But instead of scattering, they got certain kinds of different results. So what they have observed, the, the scattered electrons were detected at uh, various angles and a distinct diffraction pattern was observed uh, as uh, like the pattern observed for X-ray diffraction. So what analysis uh, Davison and Germer has given, they have mentioned uh, when there will be the uh, incidence of electron onto the nickel target, where nickel target acts as a nickel crystal is acting as a diffraction grating for the incoming electron and they are generating the diffraction pattern. Detector used in this particular case is used to record electron intensity at different scattering angles. 
let's see how data is collected and what kind of analysis is done with the help of this experiment first uh, electron count uh, recorded with respect to scattering angle theta which is useful to measure the intensity of the diffracted x-rays then um, changing accelerating voltage alters the electron wavelength uh, then we may go for the Bragg's law which is nothing but n lambda is equal to 2d sine theta and uh, with the help of that we may calculate the wavelength of the electrons uh, from the formula lambda is equal to h under root h divided by under root 2 m v. Even though experiment was a part of uh, 1927 or 1930s, but it is also having modern significance. The output that was given by Davison and Germer explaining the wave nature of the electron has found to be useful for the electron microscopy where the electron waves are used to have the imaging at the nano atomic scale. Another important uh, sector in which uh, this experiment is significant that is nothing but the quantum computing which is considered as the most powerful computation technique nowadays. Then it is also having uh, significance in the material science which uh, which is related to the electron behavior in solids and uh, deeper insight we may get with the help of this particular experiment. It is also useful in nanotechnology where the manipulation of atoms on wave properties has been done. So in conclusion, I may mention that uh, Davison and Germer were, uh, have started that experiment uh, to get the scattering of electron. But instead of scattering, they have observed the diffraction pattern, they have done the systematic analysis and they come to the conclusion that electrons are also having the wave nature. Particle nature was known at that time, but the wave nature was first time uh, explained by the Davison and Germer through their experiment. De Broglie has given the hypothesis related to matter waves earlier, but the first experimental proof related to that was given by Davison and Germer experiment. So this experiment provided the experimental evidence for wave particle duality of matter, a fundamental concept in quantum mechanics that we know. So this is all about the Davison and Germer experiment. Hope all things are clear to you. If you are having any doubt, put that in the comment box. Thank you for your patience listening.